Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me this week for another episode of Love Code on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for always watching every single one of my videos. Thank you for all of the new subscribers that have joined us in the last few weeks. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you're new, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you, you get a notification whenever I have a new video uploaded on the channel here. All right, so this week, I have a very interesting topic for us to talk about. You know, uh, recently I, I did uh, an episode that where we talked about sex positions and, and it's, it got quite the, the views. Uh, uh, of course, judging by recent views, you know, it got quite the views and uh, it got quite the questions as well. All right, so this is one of the questions. I believe that this came from that because the person is asking, you know, if we're saying that it's okay for couples to, you know, um, try things out, be creative. And I, I remember saying that and I stand by that, you know. So does it mean that we can, you know, be creative and, you know, watch some people, you know, doing this thing in a creative way so that we can learn how to be creative. All right, so that's what I want to talk about this week. Is it okay? For couples, Christian couples, to spice up their marriage with porn. Porn is short for pornography. Okay, uh, if you don't know what that is, Google is your friend. <laughs> okay, so so I'm gonna just you know jump right into it. You know this week now. Here's the thing about it. Uh, it's okay to be creative in your marriage as long as you are being creative with your partner. You and your partner are being creative. That's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, uh, when it comes to you watching other people have sex right and you know and f funding that that you know activity that industry you know called pornography because you want to spice up your marriage um then there's something wrong with that okay there's no other way to say it there's something wrong with that now there are so many other ways that you can you know you can improve your sex life if you find that it's difficult for you guys to be creative together uh, you can reach out for for professional help you know you can talk to a marriage counselor you know who, who will confide with you guys you know as long as, as far as sex is concerned right and they will, they will tell you things they will show you things in confidence that you can explain your, you know yourself and when you start to get into you know things like pornography it's a rabbit trail it's a rabbit trail and we will we will get to that in a second, but let me set this up, you know, the way that I want you to understand it from scripture. Don't forget, we're talking about Christian couples. We're not saying that, you know, people who don't know better, you cannot do that. That's, that's them. Okay. We live our lives by a different set of rules. Okay. Now, first Corinthians chapter 10, this is what Paul said. And this is a scripture that I believe, you know, he said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. He says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Not all things edify. I will not subject myself to these things because not everything that is lawful, so to say, or that looks like another translation says, that seems legally okay to do, you know, that is actually beneficial for me. So we need to check things. And, and when, when, when the, the, the thought comes to your head, you know, of, of certain things that you should do, you need to actually ask yourself, is this something that is helpful for me? Is this something that will edify me? Is this something that will edify me? That's very, very important. Now, if you have, you've been a subscriber on this channel for any length of time, you must have heard me talk about this before. What God's original plan for marriage is. It's, it's, it's very clear. What God intended from the beginning uh, is for the man and his wife to be, to be naked and not be ashamed. The man and his wife, right? And God did not intend for us to have exes. To have, like when you say, this is my ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend. That was not in the plan. That was not in the plan. That is something that came as, as human beings began to, you know, do things and misbehave, as it were, okay? The, the original intent of God was for a man and his wife to come together for the first time, this one for the first time, this one for the first time. And together, they start to experiment. They start to, you know, learn together. I just don't want to go into real details of, you know, all those things, how, how it's supposed to happen. When, when, you know, when the husband and the wife come together for the first time, there is a, there is a, there is a plan that God had in mind. And, you know, doctors will tell you this, what is supposed to actually take place and how that is supposed to bond the, the two people together. Now, you're, you're not supposed to go into that relationship or, or let me say it this way, the, the, the plan was not for us to go into that union with a lot of ideas in our head already. We were supposed to discover things with our partners as we engaged in things together. That's the meaning of naked and not ashamed, where the two of you can, can express yourselves, can experiment, can ask questions. What is this? What is that? What does this do? How does this feel? You know, when, when, when I touch you here, how, does, how do you feel? When, when this happens, what, what do you like this? That's what is supposed to happen in a marriage. 
That's what this that was the original plan. Now, let me show you what I'm saying from, from scripture here so that you, I can connect the dots together for you. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 24 to 25. Look at what it says. It says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So the only time you will be naked and not ashamed is the man and his wife. It's, why is this stressing this? It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, not the man, his wife, and other people. <laughs> not the man, his wife, watching other people naked. No, the man and his wife, the only time there is no shame in it is when it is the man and his wife. When you take it out of that boundary, when you take it out of that boundary with all of the redefinition that people are trying to give to sex and sexuality, that's when shame comes in. Because this is what the scripture says. It says, and we're not ashamed. They were not ashamed because it was the man and his wife. Both of them, the man and his wife. And they were not ashamed. So that's very important for us to understand. We need to ask ourselves these questions when this idea starts coming to us. Right, and there's no, there's no. This is not a judgment thing, right? Where we're, we're saying well, because you thought of that, there's something wrong with you. That's not the the issue. It's the devil has put you know ideas like that in our minds before. Every single one of us. The issue is, do you know scriptures to 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 push back on those ideas that the devil has put in your mind? That's very very important to ask you. Okay, so I've showed you what Paul said. I've shown you what happened in Genesis. Now, look at this. What another scripture in Colossians where the Bible speaks about about this and I like to use this scripture as almost like a golden rule, like a check to say when people start talking about different things like this, you know, things like should we celebrate this, should we do Halloween or should we do that? This is the question that I always ask them. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17, it says, and whatever you do in word or deed, it says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So this is the scenario. I want you to imagine this. Where you sit down, you and your partner, you put on pornography. Then you start watching with your partner. And you say, in Jesus' name, Lord, we are watching this in Jesus' name. Then when you finish, you say, oh, Father, we give you thanks for this. Does that even... you just see what I'm saying? I'm trying to just paint the picture to you that way so you understand that as Christians, there are certain things that we don't do. And we don't need, I don't need to show you a scripture that says, thou shalt not watch pornography. But there are so many other scriptures that already tell us that... This thing is not okay. The fact that we are even debating it in your mind, that you are thinking about it and you are saying, ah, is because there is a check in your heart that something is wrong with this. And the temptation is for you to say, oh, because I mean, this is my husband now, this is my wife now. But it's, the moment you are, you are involving other people in any form, whether in digital form or you know, physically, you are violating the principle of naked and not ashamed. It is the man and his wife that were naked and not ashamed okay so that's very important and and of course you know by now that how powerful any digital forms are you can't say that you know you and your wife are just it's just you and your wife no you have already involved other people and the people that you have involved those people that are in that industry you don't know the things that they are going through you are you are you are aiding and abetting you know some certain lifestyle certain things that are going on that you don't even know about and that you don't want to be involved in so it's important it's beyond you just you know Say, oh, we're just doing it to spice up our marriage. There are so many other ways for you to go about this in a very, very, you know, simple way that is not. And one of the other things that happens with, with this is that whether you like it or not, you start to compare yourself, you know. You start comparing your partner to the people that you're watching. You start comparing yourself to the people that you're watching. And you know what the Bible already says about that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, it says, com measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. They are not wise. So there's no wisdom in it at all. Because that's, that's one of the major problems with, with pornography. You start to compare your spouse to all the, the people that you're watching, to how they look, to what they do and what they don't do, which was not the original plan. That's not what God intended for us in whatever way. All right? So this is a very, it's very, it's very dangerous uh, territory and it's a rabbit trail. It's something that doesn't end. It will just keep going. You will just keep going and because you will never be satisfied with it. All right. So this is very, very important. You need to be very, very careful. Be very, 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 very careful about this. All right. 
the last question I'm going to ask you, and uh, for us to just tie it up in this way, is let me ask you in a very simple way: uh, this issue of you know you and your spouse watching pornography, is it something you can you can say in the company of other believers? You know, let's say you are sharing testimony in church. <laughs> okay, now you take the mic and you say, you know, last night my wife and I were watching pornography. Can you say that in the company of other Christians? You know, so those are the things that you need to think about. Like you 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 know that there's something wrong with it already. Okay, so I can go on and on and you know and tell you oh, this is this and this and that, but at the end of the day you need to you need to you know check your, yourself and 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 settle it in your heart once and for all all right and stay with your partner you can be creative with your partner but it has to be in the confines in the boundaries of your marriage okay uh, and uh, the easiest way to do it is to be naked and not be ashamed naked and not be ashamed ask yourself when was the last time that you were literally now literally naked with your wife or your husband and you didn't feel any form of shame when was the last time that's where we need to start from so it's not about spicing it up in another way it's first you guys being first of all being comfortable in your own skin first and foremost and you accepting your partner in their own skin in the way that they are you, okay and and without any form of shame without any form of you know any anything like that once you can you can get to that point then you can begin to now you know learn things together and grow together ask questions experiment with things you know try things out if it doesn't work you you ask you find out okay did you like that is this okay do you want it this way or do you not like this you know and that's the way this thing was supposed to be that's the way it was supposed to be and that's what we need to go back to and stop looking for you know external ways to spice up things and then you know give place to the devil in that way like the scripture says the devil is very very smart it is very very smart that's why the bible says the the sons of the world they are more intelligent than the, the, the sons of light sometimes because the devil will just, just give him a little space in your marriage and he will enter in full force he will enter and you will not know how far it will take you with that all right so that's what all i'm going to say for that for this week thank you so much for watching the video make sure you like the video if you do and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications as well so that you know when i have a new video out i usually have new videos out on sundays at 6 p.m atlantic standard time i have a new video out and make sure you check out believers house uh, our, our new local church with a global vision here in the city of halifax nova scotia and, and follow us on all our social media platforms and watch our, our online services you can join us for that for from anywhere uh, and uh, god bless you as you do that all right i will see you guys again next week sunday uh, until then by god's grace god bless you